You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are, as you're about to find from this question asker. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you being here to get your questions asked and answered about drones, the industry as a whole, which we got some interesting interviews I think we're going to have this week on the drone industry and Zelensky's BS comments. So it should be really fun. Uh, that should be a good controversial show. So Zelensky's going to be the drone, American drone savior. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up to no end. I appreciate optimistic people, though. I will say that. I really appreciate optimistic people. All right. Yeah, that's, yeah. Let's do this. Who? Oh, man. I could have went way, down. I'm Rob. Yeah, by the way, I'm Paul. And uh, we got a great question for today before we get to that question for everyone who listens to the podcast i know you those of you on youtube you probably are what have been watching the podcast on youtube for years thank you we appreciate it but there are about three million other people that don't listen on youtube and um actually i think last year it was like six million downloads or something like that anyway long story short is for those of you who are listening on spotify pandora apple Podcasts, and all the other distributors out there Don't be afraid to check out our new Drone News Now segment. We've got a new show coming out actually this week talking about how the first person, actually would be the second person who shot at a drone is getting convicted. We're going to be talking about DJI and BYD's partnership. They're trying to come out and say that they were the first to connect drones and cars together. That is not accurate. Land Rover did it with Sky Hero three years ago, so we're going to keep them accountable. But there's a lot of news going on. And if you want a no BS, no holds barred news show, then you're in the right spot here at Drone You. The thing is, is that we only publish them to YouTube. So if you are listening to us right now on Spotify or any of those other distributors, uh, you're going to have to go to YouTube for those shows. Also, don't be afraid to check out our new Matrice 4 Enterprise review. We really love that drone. DJI has actually deserved some credit here outside of the numerous ways that they now want to collect your data. They have done something that I want to say thank you for, which is making the drones fun to fly again. If you haven't flown a Matrice 4 Enterprise, it was everything the Mavic 3 Enterprise wanted to be. And the teaser here is no more software limitations on how you turn the drone. So check that out. I think you'll be really curious and interested about that show, which might be relevant to our next podcast. But anyway, that's going to do it for this little segment. Check out the Drone News Now and check out the new review by Drone You. Let's hear that question. How's it going, Paul and Rob? My name's Jack and I'm from Australia. So I've got a two-parter question. And so we'll start with my first one. So um, I'm interested in starting with construction over time and time-lapse ortho mosaics. I'm just watching the build as it goes through its stages. Do you reckon a Air 3 with manual flying and PIX Pro is going to be sufficient? And then onto that, I haven't got my REPL, which is the equivalent of the Part 107. So do you recommend getting the uh, REPL before I approach a foreman to gain experience? Or do you reckon just run it and gun it and ask for forgiveness? All right, cheers, boys. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate the question. Always love hearing from our friends and allies across the pond in Australia. Um, Some good questions. Air 3, probably not going to cut it. Well, you know, what's interesting that he brought up, Rob, is he said Pix Pro. And um, I don't know if he is talking about a Pix 4D based software or another software. My guess is if obviously correct me if i'm wrong jack but i'm pretty sure he's talking about pix4 pix4 pix yeah. Yes. yeah 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 and in all honesty i don't know if the air 3s camera is in the library for pix4 d um i've personally never tried it because manual flying on the air 3s is not going to be a viable slash scalable solution i mean you can always do manual flights for you know capturing 3ds you can use the air 3s um to use uh what is that ai software that you can make cool 3d models of stuff mainly for the purpose of making video um luma labs you could use it for luma labs 
Xbox 4D Capture Pro does not support yeah, so as it, of November of 2024. Yeah, so it does not support the Air 3S in the and camera. If it doesn't support the Air 3S, it won't support the Air 3, probably. Probably, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. But that's for capture, that's for capture. So that's the acquisition True. software. I wonder if for actually Pix4D Mapper it would work. But if it doesn't work for capture, it probably won't work for the right. for everything else. So the answer is I don't think that's a viable solution. I do love the Air 3S. Great drone. The video out of it is incredible. The panos are incredible. Um, and the LiDAR functionality is really sweet. I'll be honest with you. I've been saying this for probably a couple weeks now. If you're in construction, you're going to have to have two drones. Um, that's why this whole DJI versus domestic drones uh, formula is changing, Rob. It's not just like, I'm going to spend five grand on a DJI drone and that can't compete with a $30,000 Astro. It's like, well, well, well hold, back it up a second, okay? Number one is uh, you can't shoot anything more than 4K30 on a Mavic 3 Enterprise or Matrice 4 Enterprise. Mm -hmm. You have no AEB functionality, so you're not getting pretty pictures. You have no high codec video, so you're not getting good videos. And uh, you can't shoot good panos either. So um, you're going to need two drones, which is most likely going to be a Mavic 3 Enterprise, Matrice 4 Enterprise, plus an Air 3S, which is going to take you to seven to $8,000, not buying any extra batteries. I mean, you're getting into Skydio pricing now. And actually, if you think about it, DJI is now more expensive than Parrot, which is an NDAA-approved drone. So the NTSB should be happy because they're flying those Anafi AIs. So Are they really? Uh-huh. Yep. Hmm. And also, thank you, Brian. Appreciate your referral. You're very sweetheart. You're very nice sweetheart. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, by the way, I do want to mention um, the things that you said you're going to be doing are uh, covered very um, in a detailed manner in our construction bundle. Well, you yeah, and also that. the new construction course where, you know, we're talking about hyperlapses. Which is part of the construction panos, bundle. Panos, all of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, this is, we're going much, 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 much deeper. That's why it's called Construction Mapping and Media Deliverables um, is because it covers, li like, literally, you've got the whole mapping class, the new mapping class that's like a feeder into it. So basics of mapping, so that way you know everything. And then we move right into like, okay, we are going to go to a construction site and go complete a job for a client. We're going to walk you through it. And this is not like some residential construction site. This is like a $100 million industrial construction site. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's an incredible class. I'm so proud of it. Very well shot, highly produced, really cool assets. I've never gone so deep. I mean, even we're combining classes now too by having like a uh, pano editing and stacking included in that class. So, I mean, it really goes down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that being said, you are right that the most of the deliverables that he's talking about, those 2D orthos, et cetera, this mm -hmm. is not something either. I think this, I think this should be said. I love your drive, love your hustle, keep it up, but be careful in mapping because what you don't know that you don't know can very quickly sink your business. I still will never forget the story of going to the Pix40 user conference and a guy, this was in 2017 before phase one and drones, um, before he said you can get one millimeter accuracy and he was laughed off the stage because if you knew any of the basics of photogrammetry, which by the way are starting to change. You can't even get that now, can you? You can. Yeah, yeah, you can. One you're gonna millimeter. Yeah, you're going to be flying a phase one, 100 megapixel well, camera. Right. How much is that? $100,000 drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, yeah. You can do just about anything. <laughs> you can fly to Mars. Well, and I'm, I'm if, I don't know if anyone actually is paying attention to our Twitter or X account, but we reposted a study that came out of Europe where slam-based photogrammetry, which is kind of taking hmm. a different method of photogrammetry, is kind of changing the rules where you don't have to maintain a focal length. You don't. You can have really odd positions and camera positions, but what they're doing is they're taking pre-existing satellite-based models and then refining them with slam-based imagery. So it's not a replacement for photogrammetry. It's more of a, okay, we figured out another method of making better lifelike accurate models, but you need some base model first. So photogrammetry is not, it's still safe. <laughs> Just put it that way. But slam is up and coming. Gaussian splatting up and coming. There's a lot in the future of mapping here. Yeah, I know. It's it's I, wild. Let me just say, I have no idea what he's talking about, mm. which is why you want to make sure and learn mapping from DroneU. <laughs> because <laughs> I know there's a lot of folks out there that have been bringing on mapping stuff that, that do what we do. Oh, I don't they know. Can't. Proceed at your own... Uh, <laughs> 
at mm. your own risk. Uh, that I. Mm, Anyways, okay, yeah. I don't want to dwell on that, but yeah. uh, I, I could, could not get in help. Really fast. I could not help but to make that point. Okay, so Air Three is probably not going to do it. I mean, there's pro- you could make it work. But, but that's it's what gonna I'm saying. Be, it's it's going to be tough. It's not scalable, dude. I mean, yeah. it's really not. You're and, and to fly single grid, double grid missions manually, it is possible. It's extremely difficult, though. I mean, it's really, really hard to maintain those overlaps. Mm-hmm. But let's get to a second question. Should I go and approach a contractor? By the way, when we're talking about who do you approach on a construction site, you're talking about the superintendent, the super super. I like calling them the super super um, because you always have multiple superintendents, project engineers, project managers. And you'd be surprised. A lot of people have simplistic problems that they want solved. But should he go approach those people without a drone license? Rob, what, what do you think? I think absolutely not. Um, I the What did you say, Jack? Just what is it, balls to the wall or just go for it and ask for forgiveness? Now, if you have your license and you want to go map and then give them a deliverable and say, here, I did this for you, go balls to the wall. Absolutely. <laughs> that is a very different question. No, no, no. We're I'm, Realistically, we're definitely believers in following the protocols and the systems that are set up by your governmental entities. Whether we like it or not, they are there for a reason. And I don't know the extent to which the Australian authorities are enforcing things. It seems like it's getting more of, to be more of a thing here in the States as to enforcements. Yeah, the de- enforcements are definitely up. We've been covering that in the news shows as right. well. Yeah. But either way, I'd say get your license first. I, that's how I, that's what I would do. I, I think it's important to kind of reiterate something that we've been saying since 2016, which is you don't get your drone license certificate uh, you know, I can't even believe in the old days people would be like, it's not a license, it's a certificate. Shut the F up. No one cares. Anyway, long story short is whether it's a certificate or a license, you don't get it to make the government happy. That is not the point. If you go at it in that mindset, you are literally violating the things that are in the test for the for the license slash certificate. Okay. I mean, it literally talks about hazardous attitudes, at least on the FAA side, the US side. Um, which is the the framework for ICAO anyway. Um, so if you're talking about hazardous attitudes and you have an anti-authority attitude, you have completely missed the whole point of taking the test in the first place. So you don't do it to go make the FAA happy. You do it so that you understand the rules and you understand how to navigate the airspace according to the systems that are set up to make it safe for everybody. This is not just about you flying in your backyard and having a good time. Although Rastafarian man at Triple B might try to shoot you out of the sky. Remember him? <laughs> They're flying in my backyard. Yeah, it's okay. Rastafarian <laughs> man. Rastafarian wannabe man. Yeah, he and Austin Keen look awfully alike. So. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call Austin a wannabe, but any, No, not anyways. at all. No, no, no. 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 Um, but long story short is you don't go out and get the test to make the government happy. You do it to set up a foundation of safety, a foundation of how to navigate, right? It's just like, again, it's like driving. You know, if you want to go out and you want to be an F1 driver, you want to, even if you drive like me, you want to hit the apex on the turn close to the office as fast as you possibly can. In order to practice that, you're going to have to have a driver's license. And you're going to have to have a foundation of understanding the physics of the car and how the the rules of the road, because if you cross the double yellow line and you hit someone head first, it's going to be your fault. So that being said, you have to have a good point a foundation of understanding how to navigate airspace. And it's not something that you screw with. It's not a risk that you take. The reason you do not take this risk is because at least here in the United States, if you go out and you fly and you make money and you don't have a part 107 license and something happens, a catastrophic event happens. And this happens all the time. Like you, you hit someone with a drone, um, you uh, crash your drone on a car and it causes a major car accident. We've seen that now too. You know, there are, there's a litany of things that can happen. And actually we're going to have um, Chris Proudlove from Global Aerospace on the show talking about one particular case that costs the company hundreds of millions of dollars to insure. <laughs> and I mean, like you follow the rules, you get the license so that if something bad does happen, 
you do not completely destroy your business. You don't destroy your dream of flying and you don't destroy your finances for your family and everything that you've already built up to that point. It is the risk tolerance is not there. Yeah. And we're not naive enough. We're not naive to think that people aren't out there flying without licenses. It's just, it's fine until it's not. Exactly. Right. And And eventually you do it long enough. It's probably going to get to not. I was just going to say that. I'm like, you take flight enough times that, you know, you take flight a hundred times and that 1% chance of something happening is now present. So mm-hmm. it's not worth taking the risk, man. It's, it's not. It's not like, obviously be flying and even, you know, running models and doing all the stuff that you would do to practice. But just go knock out the license. Get it done. Yeah. You know, not worth it. Just not worth it. So anyway. True enough. Yeah. True that. Yeah, we've got as a, they say. We've got a friend in Australia who's doing classes. I forget his name. Um, his name's Paul too. I just forget his last name. Doing it, classes for their certification. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Paul New. I think N E W. I don't know. Anyway, anywho, I don't know about their business. I'm just saying. I, I it's someone random. I've seen all over LinkedIn. He does a very good job on LinkedIn. So great job, Paul. And anyone named Paul in the drone business has to be cool, right? I you be the judge. <laughs> oh, thanks, Rob. <laughs> Appreciate I mean, yes, your dedication. Of course. <laughs> wow. On that bombshell. Well, there's more Pauls than you. <laughs> I you know. know. You're telling me I have to I'm say every... I'm obviously referencing myself. Every other... Well, that's not how the question was phrased. I'm a very literal person. I'm a... Too literal. I'm a bean counter. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> All right. right. I'm Rob. All right. And I'm Paul, not cool in the drone industry. So I think there's only two people that would say that anyway, but uh, I know both of them. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. If you have a question, ask droneu.com. And just to clarify for the question asker for this show, don't risk it on your license. But once you go get your license, go shoot construction sites and then provide it as gifts. We just had someone on the coaching call who did exactly that. And he, we've got an amazing story from the coaching call that we're going to do a whole podcast on. Uh, we're calling it the $28 million ortho mosaic. So anyway, uh, that is going to do it for us today. Thank you again. We appreciate it. Astronew.com. We'll see you next time. <laughs>